I'll just add Mosca very quickly. Here it is. So I'm doing it a little differently that you would because I'm using another protocol with Mosca that isn't uh, officially supported, but the one uh, you're using should uh, should work just as well. So uh, I'll just click here, record automation from here. I should be able to play right. So I just draw and it's recording all my movements, right? Yes. So now I stop it. And uh, maybe what you want to do is uh, stretch this out or shrink it so that the movement is faster or slower, right? Yes. I don't know if you, uh, I don't know if uh, I showed you this, but you can just select uh, a certain, uh, another mouse uh, option. Basically, if I just try to stretch it now, it's just going to be, uh, just going to crop uh, out or in and just suppress some points or add some. That's not what I want to do. What I want to do is stretch everything out so I can change the mouse state. There is a scale mode and a grow mode. So for now, I'm in the grow mode. So if I just uh, shrink or grow something, it's just going to grow out of the process. If I select the other mode, now I'm in scale mode and I can move everything. And now everything is uh, staying yeah. relative to the time interval. So now the, um, the recording will play a lot, uh, um, uh, will take a lot longer. Okay. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I also got. My question was uh, actually: Is it is it possible when we record when we recorded a certain movement, and uh, in between I would like to correct a certain movement so that, for example, it went up, but then I said, ah, this movement was not good. Actually, I want I, I want the want uh, I wanted to do the curve uh, a little bit different. But when I just uh, recorded it in this automation, it's it's very hard to for me to go inside of the Moscow to change the movement, uh, the direction of the movement. You know what I mean? The, yeah, the sure. Thing is sure. Uh, that's, that's what I also got. Um, there was just the question if we uh, can also create this, or uh, can see the automation in a 2D animation, uh, uh, what we created before. Uh, so, uh, yeah, for the 2D animation, we don't have yet uh, uh, the rendering, but what you can do if you, uh, once you've, uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. So I can go into maybe a, a full view of this. I can see uh, the automation I've created, right? Right. So uh, if uh, a movement, uh, if a point doesn't uh, work for me, I can just select it, I can move it around. I can uh, uh, remove it. Uh, I can remove a bunch of them at, at once, you know, and I can change everything I want. If I go into full view, it's very easy to see all the curves, right? Yes. This is okay. Okay. So uh, now I've, uh, I've moved this one. Uh, I realized that this was not uh, a Cartesian. I, I chose the azimuth. So yes. I just changed the azimuth here and the elevation uh, is still the same. But it works exactly the same. You can record both. Okay. And then maybe what I want to do uh, is, uh, is work on the curve of this segment. So I can just uh, uh, force the curve here by holding the shift key. Right. Uh -huh. yes. okay. So now you can really edit as you want. And then if you're missing points there, you can just double click and add as many points as you want. Okay. Uh, also, if you want to experiment with certain kinds of shapes of uh, automations, you can just click on it on a segment, uh, right click and go into easing. And we have lots of available shapes, for example, the elastic one some different ones that will scale differently if you move the points around, yeah. you know. If you're in full view, it's probably easier to, to yes. do that sort of yes. editing. Yes. Is it now, just, just, just the question, sorry, Thibault. Uh, when, when you, what you showed me right now, if I'm, if I'm putting this line in the Cartesian, for, for a Cartesian, yeah, and I'm doing these curves, does it, does it actually also change the position in the Mosca? Or is oh, it yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going it, to... It does, yeah, yeah. because, okay, I didn't, I didn't get that one. So when I have this uh, in this Cartesian uh, recorded and I change these points, it also changed the position in the Mosca. Well, I mean, it will change them while, when you play these automations. It'll be played through time and you have to make sure that, uh, well, either you read it in full view like I do here yes. or uh, you connect it 
uh, maybe to the beginning yeah. like this uh, yes. to make sure that it's played. But yeah, yeah what once uh, I mean, this is a pretty much a very different uh, um, automation that uh, the one I've recorded, but it's still sort of based on it, you know. Okay, good, good. Yeah. So, yeah. And Thibaut, can I ask you another yes. question? Yes. Just wonder, um, because I really like to work in the oscilloscope, not uh, selecting sources in Moscow. So, is it possible to um, stream the audio source directly from oscilloscope, like from the arrangement view to the Moscow? That would be actually requiring an extra uh, interface. Uh, the one I use on uh, Linux is uh, Jack. And I can uh, completely uh, customize the signal flow. See, I have Super Collider here. And I can say, okay, score right here is just sending uh, audio to the system. So I'll just select this. I'll just uh, disconnect it. Uh, I want score to actually send audio to Mosca. On... Um, Mac, I think this, so you have Jack, but Jack will not be compatible with the latest uh, uh, Macintosh uh, yes, OS. Yes, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But uh, there's another one called Black Hole, I think. Yes. Um, if you if you Google Black Hole, I think is an alternative. And there's also Soundflower, a similar uh, program. I should yeah. do the same. What you're going to want to do inside Mosca, uh, instead of loading uh, sound or streaming sound like we do, we just go uh, external in. And I can say that maybe uh, I just want uh, the left channel of score to uh, to be uh, spatialized with Mosca. So I say that it's uh, just going to be one channel. I'll go to three, and then if I go to three, uh, I can just say in here, well, it's going to be two because it starts from zero. Sorry, this may be confusing. But, okay, I'll just take one channel, and it's, co it's coming from input two. So it goes zero, one, and two. I'm in the, the two one, so I can just go back into score. And in score, I will add uh, yet another device that's always present, but it's not always shown in the device explorer. And uh, it's the audio device. So if I just go uh, audio right here, I just add it. And now I have a representation inside score of my uh, inputs and outputs. If I use a sound file, for example, I just drag and drop it uh, sound file here. Uh, I can say that this sound file, it's a stereo sound file, but if you use a mono sound file, it'd be the same. It will go out on a output uh, zero, for example. And I know that this one is routed, you know, the first one here is routed to three. So I know that this one is going into Mosca first source uh, with the external input. So now this is the, the input of score. There are two things that I need to do in score. I need to make sure that the source is playing because uh, it still needs to be playing to receive the audio. And then I can just play uh, my sound and it will uh, directly just send it to the, the output zero and, uh, and be routed correctly. I also want to avoid the propagate so it doesn't come out as well on the master. So then what you want probably is that in score, my audio is actually uh, 32 output. Okay, so now I have plenty of options where I can send a different uh, sound file, and then I'll have plenty of options uh, in Jack, you know, to connect to uh, to uh, Supernova. I can just disconnect it here. And then you can do your, your routing here. You can maybe say the th three goes to this one and then <laughs> this one, you do whatever you want, the equivalent on the, on the Mac. And then on here, you just go, uh, you can actually use the data window or probably facilitate things. So I can say that the, the first one is mono and start from bus index two, uh, external in for the, the second source. Uh, this one is uh, maybe four channel. It starts on buses six or something, 
and then you can just uh, in this window you can just add um, all the options you need for the routing you you want when i when i load, load in now all the sources how you explained it now in moscow yeah um um when i uh, is it is it then that i uh, for this auto saving every time when i when i when i start moscow do i have to put the sources in again actually moscow doesn't work with a save file it's a save folder so I can just say, like, a, I can just load a, a few sounds. So I'll just go to uh, maybe the three. I don't know. I'll load. Uh, what will I load? I have a little basic configuration here, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to save that. Uh, basically, yep. when I want to save stuff in Mosca, I want to save the entire content of this window, right? which will have everything, even the original positioning, uh, maybe uh, the change in volumes in libraries. I want the, the sound, the channel ordering. I want to save everything in here. So what I do is I go into control auto. This is actually the same place where I will control automation, but in here, we just want to take a snapshot to make sure that we've recorded every one of these parameters at this point. And now we can go and save automation. By default, it will save the automation in your home folder. Enter and see that it's saving all these automation. Now I can completely stop Mosca and I'll start a fresh version. So now I go into the data and you see I've lost all of my uh, my data basically. Yes. I have I have nothing right. It's all it's all to uh, every uh, parameter is at default. So I just go load automation, and I see that it points me to the same default folder. I can just uh, accept because this is where I uh, saved it. I just go okay, and now I have uh, all my my folder back. I have my uh, yeah every parameter is back. Okay, great, fantastic. Okay. Yes. Uh, one uh, one thing I should uh, mention, uh, because uh, after all, this is a more uh, a workshop on score, but you can actually do all of this on score. If you don't want to use the save option in Moscow, you can actually do it all from score. So I can go into source one, input, and I can save the name of the file here. So maybe I don't know uh, this file. I can uh, I can take this uh, this path right here. And I can load it here. And uh, what I like to do usually, uh, a good thing to do in uh, in score is that when you have default parameters and stuff you want to recall, for example, uh, every time you stop to make sure that everything goes back to the original setup, maybe I want to save every parameter from source one. So I just grab and put source one here. So I'm saving in this little state here i'm saving all these parameter as they are right here right okay. uh, actually the file path i just uh, erased i'm just going to put it back and save it again by drag and dropping here and i i can see it's here so now if i can if i change anything i change the path here i change the value uh here i uh change uh, the value here Every time I reinitialize, it just goes back to what I've saved here. So I could also save everything from Mosca directly in score if I want. The initialization is something that will uh, be done every time you press play anyway. Uh, but you can also stop the playing by just using the reinitialization. It'll just send all these messages back to Mosca and reinitialize it with these parameters. Okay, so I open it just one time and then Moscow already uh, knows it and does what it should do without using Yeah, it. yeah, that's a way to do it. Anyway, okay, bo both ways are, are correct is uh, yeah. really uh, your call. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Of course, of course. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Rado, for staying uh, for the whole time. Thank you, Jean-Michel, for popping by. Again, don't hesitate to contact us on the forum, on the chat, um, anywhere, and uh, let us know of your experience. And we will be very happy to listen to your, your composition and what you come up with uh, with the software. Yeah, great. Send it right over. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll stop Thank the recording you. now. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Bye-bye.